Oh, now, not Mars. No, no, Zelda. No, 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 Book, 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 earth book. Oh, oh, biscuit, biscuit, yup, 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 Button, button, yep, 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 Oh, yep, 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 So, after a uh, fairly intense two-parter, a, a fortnight of two-parters with the Bringers of Wonder, Welcome back to the Randomizer Joe 90, and uh, also welcome back to the Randomizer Joe 90 after a, a, a fair few weeks of the podcast being a bit mean to old Joe, I would say, uh, as it often is, unfortunately, but there have been some... Biggest plane I've ever seen, Uncle Brett. ...specific comments made. Joe, it's an OGT. So shut your mouth. glide transport. The world's most advanced concept in aerospace passenger transportation. But here I am, always ready to defend Joe 90, because I think it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, it always makes me so happy. I was thinking that again just watching the opening titles. Despite the fact that this episode is, um, you know, it's, I don't think it's the, the finest uh, example of the series by a long way. Complete motors 1 to 12. But it's still very enjoyable. Uh, I, this is another one. Cabin temperature normal. Pressure, normal. Where I can say I have uh, fond, nostalgic memories of this from the VHS days. Gyros set on course. Yes, I've spoken a lot about VHS, and this was uh, an episode I, I got on a tape, ex-rental from the library. There are, of course, other countries uh, developing an orbital glide transport brand. One other country. About a year behind us in development. We won't name that country. It's a foreign land stand. Share of trouble on ground tests. Yes, I had this on a, on a videotape with See You Down There and The Birthday, both of which we've already covered, and Mission X41, so I watched this over and over and over. I have discussed over and over and over my memories of uh, VHS era problems, the agony of, of choice, but this, as I said, it was ex-rental from the library. I got this with a Stingray tape. Joe? It was annoying, actually. I remember the Stingray tape. A young guy named Dr. Slade. Is he good? The packaging was, I think, for volume 9, and I had the tape for volume 6 in the box, but this was Joe 90 volume 8. It was actually volume 8 in the box. You operate a standard screening procedure for all personnel. Before each ground test, we checked and double-checked every man on the project. And came up with nothing? No. So this time... Should we... I say nothing can go wrong? A ...computer in the launch control building. Ooh. Slade knows about the computer. But even he doesn't know where it is. So we're about to launch an experimental plane. Whether it's a design fault or sabotage. And the computer can pinpoint who in launch control is responsible. Ooh. Yes, it's it's kind of a hybrid plane and spaceship, OGT, orbital glide transport. And we have some um, or control personnel in a bunker, led by this chap, Slade, played by the Macy puppet, with, I think, three technicians. Yeah, three technicians. Green. Check. But something that will come into play... Secondary automatics. Ooh. All green. That's an interesting shot of a puppet's either leg or bum. Uh, they were showing the, the hidden computer, which is just under a desk, flashing away like crazy. Um, yes, they've, they've placed the launch control building right in a direct horizontal line from the 
launch ramp. Seven, six, As we are about to see, four, three, that's not a very good plan two, one, for an experimental plane. But that's that's by far the least of this uh, this plane's problems, as we're about to see. Release all umbilicals. And I do like the the look of this thing, the hybrid nature of it. You know, it's, it looks like a plane, but it's got these rockets attached to it, taking off from a launch ramp, um, similar to to XL5 in a way. I also remember this turned up as a spaceship on on a, a, a TV21 cover. I want to say she's not really moving yet. Go on. Go on! I hear you, Mr. Johnson. I was just taking a moment to warm up, but now I'm moving. No, Uncle Brad. But not fast enough, Joe. Slade, close down all motors. Say again? An all motor shutdown, Slade, now. Yes, I believe this plane has no crew. Uh, is guided entirely by computer. It's closed down. Malfunction on five, Doctor. Can't shut out. Oh, bother. Emergency clamps into position. Yeah, emergency clamps. This will stop it. These, I love these. These tiny little bits of metal. No red alert. That are supposed to stop this runaway Leviathan plane. And here we go. Well, that's the emergency clamps taken care of. And now the plane is swooping off the launch ramp. Do you know, it's heading straight for the launch control building. I like that insert shot of the uh, of Slade and all the technicians inside, covering their heads with their hands. Slade, are you all right? Yes. Well, okay. He's okay. We've got a lot of emergency people on the way. Get your men into the ejection capsule immediately. And really, it's a nice setup for a Thunderbirds episode. We have this. Team, be able to get out, Dad. As long as the rocket doesn't ignite. If that happens, the launch control building becomes one huge concrete oven. Oh, there's a cheerful image. Yeah, this plane balanced very precariously on the edge of the launch control building. We've got people trapped inside. Hurry, Doctor. Don't wait for me. I'll take the reserve escape capsule. Slate doesn't want to come along. Down, you'll be sealed in here. It's a risk I have to take. It's my responsibility to salvage launch data. Interestingly, there are three technicians. Oh, the capsule. But we only see two in this capsule. So either... I mean, it's a curved capsule, so it might just be that we can't see one, the other guy, from that angle. Or it could be that the third one died. But I think that's unlikely. We don't see a body anyway. The roof has now caved in on the launch control building. So having got the technicians clear, Slade is trapped inside. And it's a nice uh, interior set for that launch control building. Lots of familiar computer banks and and the, those lovely um, spool tape computer bank things. Dr. Slade, are you receiving? Which of course turned up in, uh, in UFO on the walls of Skydiver. Why didn't he use the reserve escape capsule? He could be trapped in the rubble. I like that. Mac and Joe have both worn suits for this occasion. Slade will never get through that. Which means we can't recover the concealed monitoring equipment. Right. And this map they're standing in front of, I recognise this map from Captain Scarlet. We need outside help, Mac. I don't think it's the um, Frostline defence map, which turned up a few times. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this was a map just created for this series. I seem to recall it was in Attack of the Tiger. Anyway, Mr. Johnson, manager of the uh, the plane what has crashed. Mr. Weston. World intelligence is not a rescue outfit. I know these other guys who are capable of doing that. They're called Spectrum. Aspects involved, the computer findings. If we don't get to that, this country's lead in the OGC race goes out the window. We'll I thought we were building an OGT. What's an OGC? Tomorrow, but until then, we can only cut a 14-inch bore. No man would be able to slide down a 14-inch bore. But a boy could, Mr. Weston. Exactly. Ah. It's a tough one. That aircraft could slip at any time causing a spark which would ignite the fuel. And it sounds dangerous enough to send Joe. And he sounds like he's up for it. Let's do it. Brad Johnson's concealed computer. The heat would destroy all the data in the crash. And five years design and development on the OGC would be lost. Even if OGC we... again. Hang on. Hang... Right, I'm going to check that. I'm sure he says it's not a plane, Joe. It's an OGT. Orbital Glide Transport. One who also knows how to use explosives. What's it? Where's OGC come from? Sir? Doesn't exist. No problem. Uncle Brad worked behind enemy lines during the last war. With whoever it was. Expert. You mean we could give Joe Brad Johnson's brain pattern? Why not? Can you think of a better man for the job? I'm sure he won't mind donating his brain for science. 
And here, who's in charge of getting the plane off the building? So far, right on schedule, Mr. It's Captain Magenta in a silly hat. Ah, meanwhile, Brad Johnson has retired to his office, which is well stocked with booze. Oh, there's that map again. Who called in world intelligence, Mr. Louver? Lots of arrows flashing all over the place. It's the best thing that's happened in a very bad day. You're w a very handsome fellow. I'm quite excited to meet you. But there's one condition. Once that drill has done its job, I want the whole area cleared. Uh, he's brought his suitcase with the, uh, well, the obvious antennae, for which he can transmit Brad Johnson's brain you know. back to the big rat. Thus, they have another person's... Thoughts and experience Maximum security clamp. under their control. I'm afraid it'll have to include you too, Mr. Johnson. But surely I can help. Oh, uh, you'll be helping, Mr. Johnson. We can promise you that. It's very unethical. You've got to say it. It's very unethical. I, I would love to know if, if years down the line, not only what happened to Joe, which I think is the primary long-term concern, but if this ever came out, the, the public outcry of having your brain illegally recorded like this. Okay, Dad, I'll get into the big rat. And it's, it's, it's a shame, or almost a shame, that the show never explored that in some way, because this is a, a more sophisticated and mature show than, than some of the earlier ones. Worse. So it wouldn't be out of place. This area. The fact that they never raise the, the question is, is just deliciously, uh, deliciously wicked. Moved from base area. Each man to be checked Clear personally by the base security officer. What's it all about, Mr. Johnson? They're my orders too, Chief. We're completely in the dark here. All we know is that we've been assigned a special man for the job. Ah. See, he, he said man. It's actually a boy. But you know what? It works. I love that. I like that, um, you know, juxtaposition. I think the fact that you don't have long to dwell on it because you just go straight into the happy music. Oh, this show. This show. Even an episode like this, which, as I said at the start, it's not a bad episode. It's, it's, I would say, a thoroughly average episode of the series. It just makes me so happy. I love watching Joe 90. This is Joe. Now, let's get Dr. Slade and that computer. So, we're now cutting a, a borehole into the building. Yeah, I like the look of this as a, a setup for a Thunderbirds episode, even if the, you know, the, the rescue equipment that they've brought in doesn't look particularly futuristic. Come in, Doctor. This con this control room set more than makes up for it, though. I think there's some medical equipment scattered through here. All oh, the um, cloud base lounge chairs are also here, which Come in, Doctor I think had first been seen in Thunderbirds Argo. Oh, there he is. Not until I've found that computer. And just that sudden cut to him standing there, completely unharmed. Because that puppet played so many Mysterons, almost for a moment, I'm inclined to think, he's a Mysteron replacement. You'll have to assume the worst. He's a Mysteron replacement. Thanks a lot, Chief. The mining team, they've just broken through. The problem's all yours now, Sam. But for the life of me, I can't see how you're going to handle it. Leave it to us, Mr. Johnson. Okay, Sam. Now you know where the computer's located. Hmm, I also know where the booze is. That's what I'm going to start on first. Right on there ...who will understand my programming. Don't worry, Mr. Johnson. We plan to use someone who will understand it as well as you would yourself. What I mean is we've stolen your mind. But don't worry, we'll put it to good use. Ah, there he goes. Hold it. Joe is being lowered into the borehole. A, sh a shot of Mac kneeling as Joe is lowered in almost makes it look like the puppet's got no legs. See when you are. Okay, Sam. Yeah, he's, the puppet hasn't got the bulk to make that look particularly realistic. Anyway, there's Joe's feet, followed soon by the rest of him. Weather forecast can hardly be worse, Mac. Electric storms approaching the vicinity. Oh, it would be. And this episode was also mined for clips for uh, an episode of Done, Joe. A Rory Bremner's show at the time. I think the clip is still on YouTube of uh, um, John 90, of uh, Joe having been given the brain pattern of uh, John Major. Yeah, they use a lot of clips from this episode, and I get the feeling it was just they'd asked for an episode of Joe, and this was the one they were given, this and Most Special Agent. So they had to make the, the best of it. Uh, 
that's Murphy. There's a name. There's a name on the crane. I've been trying to make out all this time. But lightning is the last thing we need. Well, thanks to high definition, of course, we can see it. Yes, Murphy's cranes are here to help. I can also see. I, I can't remember what they're called. Is it, is it sprues? What do you call the the things that the, the parts of a model kit come in? Once you've pushed out the model pieces, they would sometimes reuse those those holder bits. There's some of those on the outside of the launch control building. Look, I know this sounds crazy, Mac, but there's no sign of him. I mean, there's piles of rubble and debris everywhere. I suppose he could be buried, but... Joe! I haven't seen any blood. To slay it must be trapped under the debris. I don't see any other answer, Mac. So I'm coming back up. Oh, no, he's hiding. Find the computer. Looking very sinister. There's something else this puppet is very good at doing. As you can. And again, I think I've discussed this before, the reason that puppet played so many Mysterons is because he had the ability, to, he had a blinking head so he could uh, close his eyes, which he'll be doing later on in this episode. Anyway, Joe has now found the computer, and he's also found... Hold it there. Dr. Slade! Tell me, what's a kid doing down here? I'm a WIN agent. Part of my job was to rescue you. I see now I shouldn't have bothered. Ooh. I never could stand smart kids. Hmm. Now keep your hands off that microphone. Yes, this is all a, a cunning plan of Dr. Slade's to find the computer that was indicating the sabotage by being in the building that had that computer in it and then crashing a plane on top of the building. Are you? It's a flawless plan. Things convincingly, and then sit back and wait to be rescued. It's all falling into place. You knew about the computer, so why go ahead with the sabotage when you were certain to be found out? This was the test flight. I had to ensure it ended in failure. I gambled on finding the computer in the confusion. Hmm. Now, you've found it for me. Being buried alive was all part of the plan. Uh, it does push credibility to breaking point, his, his plan. Part of the OGT wreck, I presume. Not part of it. The whole aircraft is balanced on the edge of this building. What? If it... <laughs> and he didn't even know. This room hotter than a brick kiln. He didn't even know. To fall. So either he assumed that it missed and only partially hit the building, or it was destroyed on impact. Probably the beginning of it. It's a, it's a fairly big risk to take with your life for a, a little computer, which isn't that well hidden. Lightning ignites the rocket fuel. You are a clever child, but I don't buy that story. It's too far-fetched, unlike my plan. Excuse me. My guess is you planned for us to wait until a bigger drill was brought up in the morning. A poor guess, Slade. I was going to leave you here to burn. All clear of the escape vent, and to use one of the ejection capsules to get clear. You mean they were entrusting a tricky demolition job to you? What do you know about explosions? I know everything. He's Joe. He's Joe Ninety. What doesn't he know about explosions? He knows a lot about causing them. In precise amounts of explosive energy. Usually with missiles. It can crack an egg without breaking the yolk. Or grenades. Don't talk like a kid. You're in a jam, Slade, and you know it. And despite the ridiculousness of Slade's plan, I do like this this confrontation between him and Joe. A deal, Sonny. Not when I hold the ace of trumps. <gasps> the ace of trumps. Oh. Those charges. Yes, he's he seems to think that because he's got the gun, he's uh, he's in control of the situation. I think at this point the plane is in control of the situation. The plane and the oncoming storm. Joe. That threatens to blow it all to bits. No answer. Don't like it, sir. I don't like it at all. Oh, well, I think this is a fairly good situation. You know, what's what's the worst that could happen? Blast rebounds off flat surfaces in the same manner as reflected light. I'd move from there if I were you, Slade. You think I can't see what you're up to? Get me in an exposed position and let the blast finish me. I'm staying put. Hmm. Press that plunger. Well, Don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah. Explosion. No doubt about it. But I believe that Joe has been merciful on this occasion. Come in, Joe. Oh, that's it. Slade is out. Again, he's got his hands over his head. Joe, what's happening down there? A spot of trouble. I found Dr. Slade. Tell you about it when I get out of here. Make it quick, Joe. That's it. The plane is wobbling. Oh, yeah. One end of the launch control building is just crumbling at this point. It can't hold much longer, Mac. And although it's not a like hugely spectacular image, as I said, it is a nice 
scenario for a rescue operation. It doesn't need to be massive. Hurry, Joe! Hurry! Or a huge special effects extravaganza. Clear. I'm just getting Slade into the capsule. To be a threat. You're right, Mac. Sure, sure. And again, oh, man. some nice Rupert Davies worried acting here. Also with Keith Alexander in strong support as well. Look, I know how you feel, Mac, with Joe down there, but there's nothing you can do to help. Sam, you bring the car up. I'll be ready when you get here. And this is nice. Just this long, slow close-up on Mac's concerned face with that music. It's very effective. Again, it's it's largely due to the voice actors. Oh, that's it. The building has gone kablooey. Sparks on all the consoles in the bunker. Mac, as soon as you're clear. Ejecto! And they're away, to the sound of the Angel Interceptor launch, and kaboom! Well, it was a very small kaboom. Not, uh, not a particularly massive kaboom. But hey-ho. And there he is. Falling to Earth, he's made it okay. Oh, we still got some more explosions, that's okay. Yep, the plane definitely says OGT on it. So what was all that talk about an OGC? Were well, Sam and Mac, did they did they arrange to go to the rescue of the wrong plane? Somewhere out there there is an actual OGC that's in in real trouble. He made it. It doesn't matter now anyway. Because Joe is safe, so is Dr. Slade, who is presumably going to go to prison as an agent of unnamed foreign country did naughty things. Slade was the traitor. I worked with him for ten years. I can still hardly believe it. I know how you feel. And he's drinking. Yes, he's finally helped himself to the booze. No basic design fault in the OGT. Entirely satisfied. Now the OGC, oh, that's a complete disaster area. Resolved. But a whole lot of others have opened up. What do you mean, Uncle Brad? Well, Joe, such as how Wynn managed to find someone who could handle the computer side, and knew enough about explosives to blast clear the ejection vent, and was able to get down a 14-inch shaft. And why I hired Captain Magenta to supervise the rescue operation. Something about a boy. A boy? <laughs> well, uh, we can call on operators of all shapes and sizes, Mr. Johnson. Uh, take uh, young Joe here for... Oh, Sam's wearing his happy face. Uh, very good, Mr. Looper. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it could be true, Uncle Brad. You know, I don't wear this badge for nothing. Ooh. So he's just shown him his WIN Most Special Agent badge. You know, at some point, someone has got to with these. Um, oh yes, you 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 said Joe's. You said Joe did it. <laughs> at some point, someone has got to twig. At some point, they're going to push that too far, and it's all going to come crashing down. Anyway, that was test flight, which. You know, as I say, I, I adore Joe 90. I adore Joe 90. It's a great show. Anyone who doesn't believe so is a silly billy with a silly head who is wrong. There. I said it. But, uh, yeah, g this episode is not the greatest uh, example of the series. It's, it's, it's okay. It's good. It's just nothing spectacular. Nothing I can really get enthused about. So I, I do have fond nostalgic memories, again, from the VHS days of this being one of the few episodes I had access to, um, well, through my teens, really, in the dying days of VHS. But I'll, I'll admit it's not one of the greatest. A nice, I suppose, yeah, a nice guest villain in, in Slade, but a very loopy plan that seems to involve putting himself in absolute mortal danger and just pretending that he's in charge of the situation. So yeah, a likably goofy villain. Um, a fairly average episode, but it's still Joe 90. I still love it. Can't help it, really. It's great. 